Welcome to Wake Up With Marcy, a talk show with heart. On today's show, we will first meet psychiatric nurse, board certified in mental health and addiction, Kate Batella. We hear her harrowing story of recovery during National Recovery Month and how she is helping to break the stigma for healthcare professionals. And David A.R. White, an American actor, film director, screenwriter, film producer, businessman, and co-founder of Pinnacle Peak Pictures. David is best known for his role as Reverend Dave in the God's Not Dead film series. Lastly, we get ready to be captivated by an exciting new series called Underdeveloped, featuring the talented actor Thomas Ian Nicholas, exclusively available on Tubi. Hello all and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. So great to have you all here. I want to share some inspirational thoughts and ideas as we move into fall. Embracing change in the fall can be a transformative and empowering experience. Here are some encouraging words to inspire you to feel comfortable in this change. Just as the leaves change color in fall, embrace the beauty of change in your own life. Let go of what no longer serves you and make room for new beginnings. We have the opportunity to do this. As the seasons transition, so can you. Embrace the changing landscape of your life with open arms, knowing that each change brings new possibilities and a chance for personal reinvention. Change can be scary, but it also is a sign of progress and growth. Embrace the unknown. For it is those moments of uncertainty that you discover your true strength and resilience. Just as the trees shed their leaves, let go of what is holding you back. Embrace change as an opportunity to release old habits, beliefs, and fears, and make space for personal transformation. The fall season reminds us that change is a natural part of life's cycle. Embrace the rhythm of change and trust that it will lead you to where you are meant to be. Let's now meet my first guest, registered nurse, Kate Vitella. She has made it her mission to create change for nurses that are struggling with mental health. Hello, Kate, welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. Hello, thank you for having me. It's so great to have you and for all the work that you're doing. And you right now are helping those in healthcare with mental health struggles, but so many are too afraid to get help because of the stigma and the shame. So why is this so important to you to help these people? Well, I previously went through my own addiction struggles and I let it get to a place that was, you know, way beyond my control. I let it go way longer than I should have because I was so afraid and I was so ashamed of my behavior mm -hmm. and I was very secretive and sort of living this double life and I really don't want to see other nurses and healthcare providers get to that place. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that this is something that's taking place and they are too fearful to get help? Yeah, I, I feel like I, I hear a lot of nurses talking about, you know, it's the fear of their livelihood. Mm -hmm. It's the fear of, of their license and the the public shaming because we hold, you know, medical license and it's public knowledge when we get in trouble, when we, you know, are driving under the influence or we get caught by the board of nursing. So, yeah, there's a lot of fear. Yeah, absolutely. So. You got sober in 2018. What did mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about what you went through and how life changed for you? Like why you started pursuing this help and what you're doing, what you're exactly doing to help them? Yeah. So in 2018, I I think it had come to a culmination where I really couldn't hide it any longer. And the Board of Nursing was recognizing some mistakes I was making, 
You can find it all on my license if you look me up and you're more than welcome to, of course, because it's public knowledge. But that was really the precipice where I knew that I had to get help and I was my only option was to enter one of the monitoring programs that monitor nurses with substance use issues in order to protect from being, you know, having my license suspended. It was mandated that I joined a program like that. And those are five year programs which require the nurse to check in every day and two to three random UAs or drug screens a month and peer support groups with other nurses. And then on top of um, seeking therapy, counseling, um, going to support meetings like AA or other online sobriety groups. Yeah. Right. And, and so it, what, what is the help? What, what is happening today? Yeah. So today, you know, I, I am done with a pro that program and I've really made it my mission to speak up about this because I don't want other people, especially nurses, to feel alone and to feel like they can't get help. I am a health and wellness coach, uh, you know, basically a personal coach. And this is an issue that people tend to come to come to me with because, you know, there's so much fear and I want to be able to walk alongside people with those issues and struggles and share my personal experience and make sure that they understand it's not only okay to get help, but it's admirable. And we are doing this to protect the public from nurses who may be practicing impaired. And um, we're, we're also saving our own lives here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're saving your own life, and we we need nurses. We need you to be healthy, and the, and all those that are in the health industry, right? Because we depend on you, and absolutely. And you're human. You you're all human, and these are things. Addiction, mental health. These things are real, and they're happening for. All of us in some capacity, we are touched by it in our families, with our friends. Yep. And there's, you know, so let's talk about the nurse monitoring programs and mm -hmm. also substance use disorder and, and supports for, for this. And then reentry to work. Like once you go through all this, mm -hmm. how do you go back to work? Yeah, so you can actually work while you're in the monitoring program as long as you prove compliance to the program. I actually went back to work at about six months sober. And that's really tough because you have to yeah. be very honest with your employer and you know talk them through how you landed in a program like that and <clears throat> sort of what you're doing to mitigate any further risk, the help that you're seeking. And for me, it was really scary to go back to work and to try to face my nurse colleagues and people in the healthcare profession and sort of admit that this is the place I'm at in my life and my career. Mm -hmm. But I was ultimately met with, you know, some support, some judgment to be expected. Mm -hmm. I think what helped me was the recovery community around me you know, rallying around me and, and really commending me for my bravery in, in speaking up about it and my, my honesty yeah. and having that recovery community around me during that first initial year or so was absolutely crucial. So that I remembered, you know, why that I'm pursuing this, why I'm doing this, why I'm um, kind of fighting this battle. Yeah you are so strong for coming out and getting help. That shows strength that mm -hmm. you stood up and that you got help. And now that you are helping others, it's such important work. So thank you for all that you're doing and you know, keep spreading the message. And hopefully this has helped somebody out there to know that it's okay to get help and that you know, you're know you not to be held at a higher standard, that just let's be kind to one another 
and embrace the fact that addiction and mental health are real and all around us. So thank you again so much for coming on Wake Up. Absolutely. Thank you. Next up, we meet actor and producer David A.R. White speaking with us about his new upcoming film and new series coming out on Pure Flix. Plus, ahead, we meet actor Thomas Ian Nicholas and hear about his new series, Underdeveloped. Joining me now is producer and actor David A.R. White. Welcome to the show, David. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Marcy. It's great to have you, and you've had an incredible career, and it continues. But let's talk about how you got your big start. Burt Reynolds actually gave you your big break at 19. Tell us about that. Yeah, I did. Um, I was really fortunate. I, I came to, I'm from a small town outside of uh, Dodge City, Kansas, and um, grew up pretty much on a farm. Moved to Los Angeles when I was 19, and six months later, I was really f blessed to um, land a recurring role on Evening Shade. So Burt Reynolds uh, called me his discovery, gave me a role, and then kept having me back. That's incredible. D how did you always know that you wanted to, to act? Did you go to L.A. with the intention of going after that dream? Yeah, I mean, I always... For, for I had this, you know, this dream inside of me that I, I really couldn't get rid of. I, I saw one movie in the theater the first 18 years of my life uh, as I grew up as a Mennonite. My father was a Mennonite pastor. And so mm -hmm. I was, you know, um, grew up very conservative. But I always had this dream of telling stories and being in the movie industry and uh, and, you know, moved right out here without knowing anyone. And I was really, really blessed to end up you know, just going on that show with one line and then, you know, Burt Reynolds uh, took a liking to me and, and just allowed me to keep coming back on that show for almost four years. What I love is that, like, your path started there and now you have, you've, you've impacted so many with what you've done. So let's first talk about the God's Not Dead film franchise. And you have another one coming out. It's number six. Yeah, number five, our fifth installment. Your fifth installment, okay. Yeah, yeah we're only halfway there to the Fast and the Furious. You know? <laughs> and honestly, it's one of the most successful movie franchises in history, next to Grease, which is one of my favorites. Why do you think the films have resonated so much with the audience? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously the first movie was a big thing for us. It, it, uh, it was a little movie. It was made for one point two million dollars. It, it um, there really hadn't been any theatrical movies uh, in the faith based world before in 2014 when that was released, other than The Passion of the Christ, which obviously was a big one. But when that came out, it really shocked the world, I think, um, uh, and Hollywood, for that matter about this movie about God and, and his existence in, and, you know, it took place in a college and, and, uh, and I think it's relevant in the reason why it was so successful was that it was relevant at the time. And each movie that has come out afterwards has its different theme that just ends up being really relevant to what society is going through and people connect to it. And, um, obviously I never would have saw uh, the success that would have came from it, um, you know, uh, but I'm just grateful to be part of it and grateful to keep making them. Yeah, absolutely. And so you also were co-founder of Pure Flix, and because of that work and your film studio, every film studio now has a faith and family film division. So what inspired you to to move in that direction. I mean, a lot of people are staying away from it. I know the movie was so successful, but what really drove you to do that? Yeah, I mean, you know, we started out as a production company. We, I started producing in my late twenties. I was an actor through my twenties, started producing in my late twenties, and then realized that going through the studios to distribute um, uh, these type of films, especially at that time, mm -hmm. um, they didn't have, you know, uh, they weren't interested in these type of movies. And so 
obviously God's Not Dead opened up, um, you know, a big door into the studios. And I think the studios started realizing, oh, wow, there's a marketplace, you know. I think the stat was, this is before COVID, was 150 million people went to church once a month. Um, you know, there's a big, obviously people are interested in the spiritual realm yeah. and really films weren't um, answering that call, you know, that, 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 um, that niche. Uh, so when, when these faith-based movies came on the scene, obviously every studio started realizing, oh, wow, there's a massive marketplace for this and we should have these, you know, labels in every studio. And so now is, uh, you know, we look back and, you know, and almost every studio has a label, a faith-based label. Um, it comes and goes, you know, I, I think it depends on who's running those labels uh, and who understands the marketplace well. Um, but we're grateful that, you know, we've, we've done a lot of business. Obviously, Sony bought PureFlix, our streaming platform at the end of 2020. Um, we've done a lot of work with Universal and, um, you know, it's, 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 you never know how, <laughs> you know, that our time ebbs and flows in, yeah. in Hollywood, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're, you know, in the middle of a whole bunch of stuff right now. So, well, I think that is the thing, right? We had COVID, war, recession. Terrorism. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, there's so much that we're going through, and people are seeking programming that that is faith based or makes them feel good, right? Yeah. And, yeah, and I mean, no, the goal, needed. you know, is yeah, the goal is really to make this content that uplifts and inspires the human spirit. You know, we always say to bring people to higher levels of insight to who God is. And the purpose that he has for their lives and so you know we're, we're hoping to do that um to continue to do that through films and and um you know i've just been blessed to be part of it obviously my dad was a pastor he hoped that i was going to become an evangelist and uh and i didn't want to i didn't want to be in the church but ironically yeah. i ended up you know <laughs> doing doing yeah. um faith-based movies uh through most of my career and so I'm, i know I'm and and your whole family is in the ministry and but you're playing a preacher on TV, so <laughs> he definitely yeah, exactly. inspires you. Yeah, people come up to me all the time, you know, thinking that I might be a re like a real pastor, and I'm always like, yeah, that that was my father who was a real pastor. I'm I just play one, you know. Um, I give line people give me lines and great script writers, you know, give me lines and I can say those things. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it was ingrained in you a little bit. So that's why you played it so well. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey, I want to say, though, I do have a I have a podcast out uh, at the uh, mid September 24th or October 24th. It, it drops. It's called the White House Pod Dare to Dream. And it's about so many um, we have so many different celebrities on there. Um, people from Eva LaRue to, you know, uh, legends like Pat Boone to Jesse Medcalf. Oh, wow to all kinds of different people and their and um, and their stories about where they came from and you know similar to mine in the way that everybody has a different story and I, I just find people's stories are fascinating. So please tune yeah. in. It's on everyone, Spotify, iTunes, all over, even on my YouTube at uh, the White House Pod, Dare to Dream. So yeah, That's just incredible. have to plug that. Yeah, yeah. I mean it is about the stories and where we came from and I hope that I can be on your podcast one day. I've got quite a story, believe me. Well, I would love to hear it. <laughs> and, and believe me, I mean, spirituality and my higher power have made a huge difference in my life. And, and I'm living a dream now. And so, and I, and I get to interview people like you. So it's it, truly, uh, life can be such a miracle. And you also have a TV series, Revelation Road, that's premiering this mm -hmm. fall on Pure Flix. Pure Flix. So tell yes. us about that. Yeah, we were in South Africa for about three months last year shooting. Uh, we had done three movies previous. Actually, we started 10 years ago on Revelation Road, the first one, and then Revelation Road, the sequel came out, and then the third one, uh, I think it was like seven years ago. Um, and the, the fans, you know, just really wanted more. They wanted, it's basically, it's an apocalyptic Mad Max. Mm. Uh, something really that hasn't been done uh, in the faith-based world before. Um, and so we went off and we made um, a whole season of it and we're waiting for it to drop. We don't have a, we don't have a date on Pure Flix of when it's going to drop yet. 
um, there. Pureflix.com, by the way, if you've never been there, is a, an amazing streaming platform for faith and family films. Mm. Um, and obviously, I have a lot of our films that are, are on yeah. there, starting to they are white. Incredible. Well, thank you, David, so much for coming on Wake Up With Marcy. It's been such a pleasure. Well, Marcy, thank you for waking me up. You know, um, <laughs> I appreciate it. And everybody out there should go to Wake Up Marcy. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. All right. Well, have an amazing day and just continued success. Keep changing the world out there. Thank you very much. God bless you guys. Bye. Next, we talk to actor Thomas Ian Nicholas. You know him from the American Pie movies. We'll learn about his new comedy series, Underdeveloped. Joining me now is actor Thomas Ian Nicholas, and he's here to talk about his new series on Tubi, Underdeveloped. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. It's great to have you. And I want to talk about, my God, your acting career. I mean, you've been acting since you were a child. You started when you were six. What has it been like to be a part of so many projects and also acting for so many years? What, what has that been like? And, and also, did you have a favorite project? Um, you know, I just, I love working. Um, so that's always been my favorite part is just when I get to be on set, uh, bringing a character to life and probably one of my favorite aspects of my career now that I've been doing it, man, for 36 years, wow. 36. Um, is yeah. just that each of the projects, especially as I was growing up, it was sort of made for my peers. So I've kind of grown up with my audience. And so now when I get to do events and things or when i'm playing shows with my band or doing comic cons i'm yeah. meeting people that you know have enjoyed my work and we're all around the same age and we all they like kind of feel like they've grown up with me and i'm yeah. just getting to meet them for the first time that day you were just sharing with me about your son that you started when you were six and your son started when he was six and he's now 11. how is that for you that you started that young and now that your son is involved you know, he's having a better start to his career than I did. He started out on New Girl playing Zoe Dashanel and Jake Johnson's son, uh, went to uh, my last film, Adverse, um, and then he did the M. Night movie Old, where he was the main kid on the beach. Uh, mm -hmm. And now he plays Tom Arnold's son in Underdeveloped. Again, my project. So I guess there's a little bit of nepotism in there. Um, <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> it's actually yeah. kind of funny. I'm, now I'm, now I'm going to go off on a tangent because Underdeveloped deals with you know, kind of uh, problems in the workforce, like nepotism, favoritism. Uh, we even dip into, you know, making fun of racism and job inequality, which is kind of timely right now uh, because of the strikes. And, yeah. you know, it's kind of, I guess, purposefully ironic that we're out there fighting for real for uh, equality of pay and, and giving actors more money, and then we're making fun of it in the show. Tell us about the show and what it's been like, you know, working with Tom Arnold and some really great cast members. My, I worked with Tom 20 years ago on a, uh, a small a small project, and we've stayed in touch over the years, so he's a great guy. Funny, mm -hmm. funny, funny comedian. Uh, the show kind of starts out with my character, Joe, expecting to have finally earned his raise to get you know promoted to a more senior position, only to find out that uh, Tom Arnold's character has hired his brother-in-law, who okay. has no experience and has never produced anything in his life. You know, because like the first thing he says to him, if you watch the trailer is, oh, no, 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 that's okay. You're still running the division. You just don't have the title, money, or prestige. Oh, um, and and the you. comments on, like, on YouTube for the trailer are like, oh my God, that's my life. Yeah. And that's why I think it's just something that we can all relate to. And yeah. because it's not a drama, we can, you know, have a laugh about it because, you know, it's hard enough to live it, but we can, this is a moment for people to sort of laugh at the things that they have to deal with at work. Right. Well, let's take a look at the trailer now. So. Your mustache. Is it real? Yeah. It's real. It looks dumb. You look like a psycho. Let's go meet the others, huh? Good idea. Psycho. 
That was so awesome. I, I am so excited to see this show and, you know, incredible project. And thank you for coming on the show and sharing about what's going on with you. Thank you again so much for coming on Wake Up With Marcy. And good luck. I'm, I'm really super excited for you. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to okay. be here. Bye. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Wake Up With Marcy. We have some incredible programming to watch. I love today's show. I learned so much myself. And remember to embrace change. Change is normal. We need change to evolve. So feel comfortable with that and move forward with whatever it is that you want to change in your life. Please go to wakeupwithmarcy.com if you'd like to check out more about my guest and who's coming up next week. Remember to be kind to yourself and kind to others. I hope to see you on social media at Wake Up With Marcy, and I'll see you next weekend.